Swati Paliwan, IQAC Coordinator, Dean, School of Languages, Assistant Professor and Head, Department of Hindi, Guru Nanak College. Good afternoon to one and all present here. It takes me immense pleasure in welcoming you all for this two-day virtual NAC sponsored national seminar on IIQA, SSR, DVV, and peer team visit modalities and guidelines for higher education institutions. The topic for this session is SSR preparation under revised assessment and accreditation framework. Today we have Dr. Swati Paliwal as our resource person. She is a coordinator of internal quality assurance cell of Guru Nanak College, Chennai. She is also the Dean, School of Languages and Head of the Department of Hindi. She has been teaching Hindi language, literature and linguistics in various reputed institutions over last decade. She completed her BA Honours in History and MA Modern Indian History from Banasali Vidya Peet, Rajasthan. MA Hindi from IGNO, New Delhi, MPhil from Madurai Kamraj University, PhD from the Department of Hindi, University of Madras, Chennai. She qualified the SET exam in the year 2006. She has been a member of the Board of Studies, Indian Languages in Thiruvalluvar University from 2016 to 19, and Anamala University from 2017 to 20. She is also a member of Board of Studies, in various autonomous city colleges. She has designed the Hindi syllabus for the students of part one foundation Hindi and enemy basic Hindi. She has been a part of various interview boards for educational institutes, PSUs and All India Radio. She is a regular resource person for literary talk shows on All India Radio as well. She is frequently invited as a subject expert for to various forums. She started a Hindi learning camp, Parichay, uh, for non-Hindi students in which the basic of oral and written Hindi are taught every year. On, the, on her initiative, Gurutsva, an intercollegiate competition, is conducted every year to inculcate organizational skills and leadership quality in the students. It gives a platform to the college students to, in a, to interact with the students of other colleges. Patshala, an, initi an initiative to learn a new Hindi word every day, has also been started at two venues in the college. She has published five books and contributed to the study materials of MA Hindi for distance learning programs of University of Madras. She has also published papers in national journals, presented papers in various conferences, seminars, and workshops. She has authored articles for newspapers, and literary magazines. Her current interests are lit research in the field of communication and curriculum development for courses in Hindi learning, contemporary Hindi writing and critics, articulate orator and writer, a voracious re reader, and she has a keen interest in Indian history, heritage, society, and culture. We feel privileged to have you, ma'am, for this session. Thank you, Vijay Lakshmi ji. Uh, shall we start? Thank you, ma'am. I'm glad to invite Dr. Swati Paliwal to address the gathering. A very happy afternoon and day to all the participants. A special thanks to Abhay ji, Usha ji, Harish ji, the management side of Shashun Jain College, the principal and vice principal of Shashun Jain College, and also a special thanks and good wishes to Dr. Anam Kavita, IQAC Director, and K. Suma, Associate Director. SSR preparation, as we say, and all of in the, I feel that in the education fraternity, all of us are afraid of NAC. The NAC is coming, NAC is coming, as if something big is going to happen. It's not so, it is not a rocket science. It's very, friendly, user-friendly, and you know, very satisfying process to prepare for that. If you take it as a burden, it's a burden. Otherwise, it's a beautiful process. And what I feel, all of us, all the teaching fraternity should enjoy the process. Today, 
I am not an expert in NAC or SSR or something, but whatever experience I had in last few years, working as an IQC coordinator, submitting IIQA and SSR, and you know, more to deal with all the faculty members. That's experience only I want to share with all of you. I hope I'm audible. Uh, any of you can- Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, thank, ma yes. thank you. The problem with uh, these kind of, you know, the eye contact will not be there. I will not be able to see the people. So sometimes you feel that as if you are talking to, you know, a wall. Okay, so let's start. Uh, please start the pre presentation. So what I have done is, uh, just to make it short, initially I will tell you what is the process of SSR in few slides, maybe seven or eight. Then practically, how can we start preparing the SSR? how we can deliver, what are the timelines, all those things I will discuss with you. Next, please. Oh, Shine, can you put the charger, please? Yeah, so uh, the previous slide, please. Yeah, so you can see a purple color, a small booklet is visible, Manual for Self-Study Report, Affiliated Colleges. So why I choose this affiliated because Shashun is affiliated college, but I think that people from university and autonomous colleges are also there in uh, this meeting. Uh, basically today I will be talking about only the affiliated colleges. There is a little bit of difference for the universities. You know, the marking will be slightly different, but most of the places, the criteria are same, key indicators are same, some metrics have been changed, and maybe the marks allotted to that particular matrix has been changed. So this manual is nothing but a 85 page beautiful document prepared by NAC. In fact, if you are jumping into the NAC, it's better to read the document thoroughly. The IQAC coordinator, yes, go through it once, twice, write your notes. While reading itself, you'll be able to find that yes, my college is having this, Yes, my college is lacking in this, how I can improve, whom I can talk. For particular, uh, during the reading of the manual itself, your mind will click, okay, this person will help me in preparing this particular document. All those things will come into your mind. Since the work is huge, so I suggest at least the IQAC coordinators of all the colleges, get this book printed. Soft copies, sometimes we are not able to put our you know kind of notes in that make few copies share it with your colleagues who are going to work with you especially the ssr preparation work you have to start one year in advance then only you, because it's a huge task it's not a tough but it's you have to be very systematic and consistent so uh, all of you we can start with this book and then next please what is SSR? I think the previous session, you have already know about the process. What is the accreditation process? There are four main things. One is IIQA, second is SSR submission. The next is uh, your DVV process and then the peer team visit. So SSR is the most important aspect of any accreditation. The thing is 1000 marks has been allotted to different criteria in this. So SSR consists of basically four main points, executive summary, profile of this institution, extended profile, then quality indicator framework. Of this quality indicator framework is the main atma or the main body of the SSR. The marks has been allotted for each and every criteria. There are set number of marks. On those scale only, NAC will judge you. Executive summary, profile, extended profile. They ask for few data and they ask us to write, uh, you know, about our college. And that no marks has been allotted to these things. The last is evaluative report of the departments. Each and every department has to submit one. It's a two-page document about the department. So you will be thinking then only QIF is important. 
only quality indicator framework is important. What is the importance of executive summary profile, extended profile, or evaluative report? Why these things are these four things are important? Because your data should match. The most important thing, whatever you are submitting or writing or uploading the data, it should be same everywhere. It will start from your IIQA. Whatever you have submitted in your IAQA, you cannot give it back. So consist data consistency is very important. Next, please. Next, yeah, thank you. Uh, what is executive summary? Nothing, it's a 5,000 word document about your college, the history of the college, where the college is located, what is the vision and mission? What is special about your college? And as I told you, there are QIF, seven Q, uh, criteria are there. So each and every criteria, what your college is doing in a nutshell, maybe in 200 to 250 words, you have to write. What I suggest uh, the higher education institutes and the teachers, you write the executive summary somewhere when you start the preparation after six months and give this work to very senior faculty member who has been with your institution and preferably a language English teacher. So they will be knowing the college in and out. Then again, their communication, I mean, their writing drafting skills will be better. And after six months, you will be knowing the strength and weaknesses of your own institution. Once you start the preparation within six months, you can write this executive summary. Once again, I'm telling you, you have to prepare your executive summary six months before the submission because Again and again, reworking will be there. A lot of people will be seeing it. It's better if many people see it. Because when we work on something, we are not, we find it difficult to find the faults. But other people, it is easy. The person who has not initiated in that particular document. So you can show there. Executive summary, you have to write everything about your college, your strengths, your weaknesses, your uniqueness. And it has to be, you have to compile it within 5,000 words. Next, please. Profile of the institution. Affiliations orders, those important letters will definitely be there in your record room. So all those things you have to upload. What are the new programs you have started? What are the programs you, the name of all the programs which you are offering, it has already been submitted to IIQA before the SSR. So here you have to say what are the new programs which you started in last five years. Then the location, that academic information also, how many number of teaching staff, non-teaching staff, their name list, their qualification. And uh, since it's a if you are if you are a government institution, you have to write the community-wise details and categories of the student. You have to submit the list. Then evaluative report of the department. The number of students, the number of teacher should match whatever it is there from the department and from the academic and institutional information also. This is very important. Next, please. Extended profile. Same, you have to write the number of programs. This extended profile will be for five years. Five years for which assessment you are going. Like right now we are in 22. So definitely for you, it will be 17 to 22, that kind of thing. So last five years, how many number of programs you are running? What is the student strength year wise you have to write? Outgoing student, that is the students who wrote the final year exam. That number you have to write. Now people who are appearing in the exam, there are some final year students who may not appear in the exam all those details. So the data has to be very pakka and perfect. You can get it from, if you have your management system, integrated management system, you can take it from them or from your offices, respective offices. Now, academic information. All of us, you know, we have a nomenclature. We always say degree, your course, what are you doing? BSc chemistry. I'm doing BSc chemistry course. No. The teachers who are working on NAC or SSR, please remember that the programs and course are two different things. 
programs is what we normally call course. BSc chemistry, BSc maths, BSc physics is a program. Courses, the subjects we are teaching in that particular program are courses. Macroeconomics, microeconomics are courses. B economics is a program. So don't mix between the courses and the program. Number of courses in all programs. Each and every program, we are having 25 to 30 courses, sometime more than that. So all those courses name, you have to submit in your extended profile. Apart from that, the number of full-time teachers. Look, it is not all about the numbers. Here, I'm just telling you that you have to submit this. But whatever you are submitting, you have to give corresponding supporting documents also. When you are telling that you have 75 full-time teachers in your institution, then you have to upload their appointment order in that sequence. This is called supporting documents. So you have to prepare the supporting documents properly. So each year, what are the sanction posts where the post has not been filled? All those details they ask. Next, please. Extended profile from the institution, they ask certain things like, what is the unit cost of education? How much you are spending on education? How much you are earning? How much you are spending? For each student, how much money has been spent? Apart from that, previous accreditation details also extended profile people ask. They ask the detail about the IQAC, when IQAC was established, who are the current members, who were the previous members, all those details with proper office order from the head of the institutions are required in this. Now, all of you will be uh, submitting this AQAR, all of you have submitted and few might be in the process. So all the AQAR details also you have to submit. And please remember this AQAR should be available in your college website. SSR preparation is not all about collecting the data, finalizing it, and submitting it into the NAC. There are other places also where NAC people expect us to submit or showcase our data. One is college website. Next, please. Yeah, extended profile part two. This is a new thing. A uh, few months back, uh, I mean, I can say a year back, they asked a special thing. They asked us to write 500 words about new education policy. What you are already doing, what you can do, what you are planning. So related to national education policy, you have to write about multidisciplinary approach, academic bank of credits, what you are doing on skill development. These are the parameters on which NAC is asking you to prepare a 500 word document, how your institution is ready for national education policy. This is slightly a tough work on a practical note. I suggest the IQAC coordinator can depute someone to write these 500 words. First, the person has to go through the NEP. Anybody in your institution, if they are aware of NEP, let them work more, let them learn more about NEP and then let them think and decide what exactly your institution is doing. Look, most of us are already doing certain things which have been mentioned in NEP. But then here in these 500 words, you have to mention that what you are already doing and what you are planning to do, especially on these six parameters. Next, please. Extended profile, yes. Year-wise, they ask us number of students. We are all multiple times we have given them the number of students. So we need to be very careful. Sometimes they ask number of women student, male student, number of SC student, ST student. So all the data should be very pakka. Number of full-time teacher during the last five years, expenditure without salary in last five years. These are the main things which extended profile we have to submit. Next, please. Now this, as earlier I told you, this is our main question paper, quality indicator framework. It is nothing. Basically, NEC is like your semester and exam. 
you will be having seven papers. Some papers are important. Some papers are not so important. So seven question paper, first question paper consists of 100 marks. Second question paper, 350 marks, like that. Each and every question paper, there are sections. In SSR question paper, they are called key indicators. So there are 32 sections. There are across the seven question papers, there are 32 sections. And those sections are divided into two. Qualitative matrix, quantitative matrix. Qualitative matrix are nothing, subjective questions. You can write essay type questions. You can write the answer. Quantity matrix, you just have to give the number. So there are total 55 matrix. 55, you can say, question paper, questions. Number of question is 55. Out of that, 34 are quantitative, 21 are subjective or qualitative. This is the way you can break it down. And then now it's a huge task. Once you start preparing, you'll be confused how to go about this. I will give you whatever practical suggestion I can. Whatever I face in last, uh, while submitting the SSR, I will share my thoughts and whatever my little experience with you later on. Next, please. Now, number of criteria. There are seven criteria, as I told you. Question num paper number one. So number one paper is curriculum aspect. Look, in an affiliated college, a teacher can do very little to, in framing the curriculum because it has already been decided by the university, affiliated university. But still, how you can plan, how will you, how your lesson plans will go? How will you implement it? How will you plan your college calendars? You know, uh, college, uh, the academic planning after 10, 15 days, you will finish your unit one. After 30 days, you will finish your unit two. Like that, when will you conduct your internal exams? All those things will come under curriculum planning and implementation. This consists of 20 marks. Now the second is academic flexibility. How much flexibility is available to the student, especially in terms of internal marks, whether he can choose certain subjects or not. Curriculum enrichment, 30 marks has been allotted to this. A very important aspect of any higher education is feedback system. So this feedback on curriculum, whether the syllabus is good or not, will come from a lot of people. First is the student himself, then the teachers also give the feedback, the industry. Industry means where your students are going to work. Those people will give you the feedback and alumni, the people who have passed from your college, they will give. Okay, during, uh, during my BCom a and F, I realized that this particular paper has not been taught to me. It is better if you teach. These kind of suggestions and feedback you have to collect from all the four people, then only you can improve. Next please. Criteria two, it's all about one minute, please. Yes, I think. Yeah. So that's about Criteria two is about teaching, learning, and evaluation. An autonomous college, the marking is slightly different. It is 300 for teaching, learning, and evaluation because more weightage has been given to academic curriculum preparation. There it is 150. So back to affiliated college. Student enrollment in profile. 40 marks has been allotted to this. Student teacher ratio. This is very important. The quality of teaching will go down if the students are more and teacher are less. All of you have experienced this. If more than three hours we teach in a day, the fourth hour we feel very tired, not able to deliver our best. So same way. NAC also expect that all the HEIs, all higher education institute should maintain student-teacher ratio. So number of students plus number of teachers. What is the teaching learning process? All of us devise our own process, you know, how we are going to teach. But most of the time, we forget to document it. Here, you can showcase 
how you are teaching in which way you are different from other college and the details you can fill in here it's a qlm we will discuss this later in the detail now teachers profile and quality ugc has very specified norms that we need net qualified or phd or these kind of teacher for this kind of particular programs so whether the teacher are there up to the mark or we have appointed sub standard teacher all these things will come under teacher profile and quality 40 marks has been allotted to this evaluation process affiliated colleges yes the evaluation process is very limited for madras university it has been limited only to 25 marks 75 marks is allotted for end semester exams but still in those 25 marks evaluation process how the college or the hei is conducting in what fragment fragmentization of that particular process has been done or not or you just write a pen and paper test and evaluate the students learning abilities no it is not so modern days in 21st century pen and paper exams are not the only parameter of judging the capabilities of students so evaluation process especially all of you can evolve for internal exams now the student performance and learning outcome yes in a simple word result analysis all of us are worried about our result it should be 100% it our students will be more they should have more than 60% marks so you know nec also understand that earlier we used to teach them they went out and they worked but now we do the process reversely we ask them what we want our student to do after 3 years that is what we call the outcome so first we set the outcome and then we take the students toward the outcome first we set the goal and then we go towards the goal it is not that if we go somewhere and then we say okay we reached here this is our goal no it is not so now so outcomes yes it's a technically uh, few of our faculty members sometimes they just feel that ki, uh, this is a slightly complicated process no it is not very complicated you can have one small i suggest you to have a physical seminar because you know then the learning and teaching will be more and you can ask more questions so uh, outcomes you have to start from the one when you are framing the syllabus when you decide the objectives then you have to program outcomes should be related with course outcome and it has to be related with your question paper and how the result is coming so all these things are interrelated now the last and not the least student satisfaction survey this as a preparation for ssr you cannot do anything on the paper or bus the only thing you can do is you can prepare the list of your student and their email addresses and you have to submit it to the in your ssr the thing is parallelly you can train your student how to answer the question what kind of questions may come because sometimes when the students are from a different background they might not be seeing their mail every day if nec is sending them a mail it might have gone to spam also so they have to see check their mail every day and they have to answer accordingly this training has to be given from institution side next please criteria 3 resource mobilization for research criteria 3 is all about research and innovations and extension extension activities different ncc nss how we are doing what we can showcase but when it when it come to research from where we are getting the funding whether we are generating the funds from our institution or from the national level government agencies maybe from the uh, industries and corporate world if we are doing really good market research or something some companies give us seed money whether the institution is giving seed money or not all these things will come under resource mobilization next is innovation ecosystem what new product after the research 
the product or the process will come. So what are the new practices, new processes, new products are involving in your higher education institution? And number 3.3 .3 is research publications and awards. This is very important aspect of any higher education institute. You have to encourage your teachers to write the research paper, publish them in good journals and scopus and they have to increase their H index and all those things are very important for uh, to get really good marks in 3.3.2 and 3.3. And you can see the weightage is quite high. 25 marks has been allotted to research publication. One more thing I want to tell you, most of the time, what our faculty members, our colleagues do is they just write a paper and publish it in some XYZ magazine or maybe peer reviewed journal, sometime predatory. But NAC only gave credit to the, uh, to the magazines which have been listed in UGC care list. So be careful about that that when you publish a paper, it should be in a reputed journal with good ranking. Extension activities, yes. 40 marks, NCC, NSS, what kind of outreach activities your students are doing inside the college, outside the college, all those things will come inside them. Then the collaboration. Look, any no higher education institute or for that way, any institution cannot work in a cocoon. We need the surroundings. We have to collaborate with people. We have to go out. Then only the exchange of ideas and knowledge will come. So th this collaboration is all about collaboration with other higher educational institute, collaboration with industry, collaboration with research people. And this collaboration can be of very different kind. Like my Hindi department can collaborate with Dakshin Bharat Hindi Prachar Sabha and conduct some Hindi learning classes. A zoology department can go to a hatchery, they can provide them some solution, or the hatchery people can come to the college and give a demo on how to raise, you know, the fish and how we can, after doing BSc zoology, we can go into the fishing business. So collaboration can be of different kind, knowledge sharing, exchange of faculties. Look, their experts will come and teach our students, our experts, our faculty members can go and give them some theoretical knowledge so that's, then our students can go and do internship there, hands-on training can be given. All, this will, all these things will come under collaboration. So yeah, collecting data for collaboration will be a tough task because each and every department will be doing some kind of 10 to 15 activities every academic year. So first they have to think, sit and think where we can show the collaboration. Internship, definitely, wherever your students are going, you will be requesting them, they will be giving you the answer. So those documents can be shown as the collaborative activity. And the main part of collaboration is MOU. A lot of institutions are signing MOUs with other HEIs and other industry people. The same can be shown here in collaboration. Next, please. physical infrastructure and learning resources. Criterion four, consists of 100 marks. It is same for university, affiliated colleges or autonomous college. The marks allotment is same. Physical facilities, the number of classrooms, whether the classroom is having proper ventilation, fan, light, ICT facilities for sitting the chairs, the teaching tools, all those things will come under physical facilities. Now the library. Library is very important. Earlier, if you keep the books, that is all. That is what the library is. No, but the role of library has changed tremendously in the last 15, 20 years. Now we look at e-library. We look at how it is outreach library from sitting at home, how we can reach our e-resources through our library. There are a lot of knowledge-based resources which are paid. So if your institution has bought, if it's the member of Enlist and other paid uh, places, then your students and teacher with their ID can access that particular web page. IT infrastructure, yes. 
IT is not only important from for the programs which are related with IT like BCA, BSc Computer Science, MCA. No, now whether the student is from economics or from the botany or from the physics or maths, all of them need IT infrastructure. In fact, a language student also needed IT infrastructure for their language labs. So these things, you have to submit the data related to your IT infrastructure for 30 marks. Then the maintenance, look, buying some equipment and constructing the infrastructure is not important. How you are maintaining, how you are upgrading, this consists of 20 marks. Next, please. Student support and progression. Look, all the higher education, all our activities revolve around only one person, and that person is student. So how we are supporting our student financially, how we are supporting them academically, how we are supporting them in making them, you know, all round personality, holistic development, what kind of activities we are doing, all this will come under student support and progression. After 5.1.1 is about scholarship, 5.2 is about how, whether they are going for higher education or they are going for work. 5.3 is about student participation. How many co-curricular activities, sports activity, cultural activities, they are participating. How many social activities? How many of our students are NCC members or NSS members or YRC members, or they are doing any kind of social activity outside the college? So all those details will come under 5.3 and it consists of huge marks, 50 marks. The last is alumni engagement. Alumni, if they are late, they are coming back to your college, it means you have given them good values. You have given them extra edge. That's why they are coming back and saying thank you to you. So alumni, how is the higher education's relation with their alumni is very important. Whether they are coming regularly, whether they are donating something to their alma mater or in terms of money, in terms of intellectual capacity. Sometimes they come for, you know, uh, the guest lectures or they share their knowledge with us. Sometimes if they are the businessmen, they give work to our students and their companies. Sometimes they are at the higher position and they help our students to join their, you know, in recruitment and placement. Alumni helps a lot. So that consists of 10 marks. Next, please. Criteria six is all about governance, leadership, and management. Yes, what is the vision of the institution? How institution will take forward? How policies will help the institution is growing more and serving more to the society? How the management and people will empower the faculty members? Look. Uh, Teaching is not a static place. You have to keep on improving yourself. And if a teacher is always dealing with the young minds, every year they change, their mind change, the technology change, the knowledge change, it's very fast paced world. So every now and then faculty need, the programs need to update their information. So whether the faculties are doing it or not, or whether the management is helping the faculty members in updating their knowledge and skill. They check it through 6.3. 6.4 is all about financial management. How they earn the money and how they spend in improving the HEI. Last, internal quality assurance system whether the IQAC is well placed in the HEI or not. Usually what happened during the NAC visit for six months or one year, the IQAC will work extensively, very hectic work will be there. One senior person will be allotted, okay, you will do this work. And the whole college will know about IQAC and NAC. Once the NAC visit is over, the accreditation has been given, all of us forget about IQAC. No, it's not so. What NEC expect is round the year, 
all the time, 24 by 7, IQEC has to work. They have to do the audits, audits of the department, audits of the various support services which college is providing, audit of the teaching learning process. IQC has to frame the policies. So all those expectations, NEC expects IQAC to do all these things. And not only that, the future plan, the strategies, how to take the higher education institution to the next level. In all these things, IQAC play a very important and major role. So what IQAC is doing and how it can contribute to the institution's development, we have to showcase. Next, please. Institutions, values, and best practices. Each and every institution is unique in its own way. They have their own system of you know, values. Uh, recently, I have been to Shashan College, so their prayer, it was so different from our prayer, prayer, which we sang in Punjabi. I have been to MOP. There, the Vinayak prayer is in a different way. So, look, the values, each and every institution has a unique value system. It is not about the prayer. It is the way we grew or we groom our students, whether it's a women college or a co-ed college or an engineering college. We do have, when a student is coming from JNU, we know that he will be having certain kind of qualities. When a student is, we, we sometimes, it, it is not correct, but we judge the student from their institution. That, okay, that particular student is from that college, definitely he, will, he or she will be good. So those institutional values, it is not a one day work, every day in the classroom, in our activities, in our conduct, we teachers instill those, those values in our student. So next check those parameters in 7.1. 7.2 is about the best practices. What your college is doing, very special for the society or for the student. So these best practices you have to choose. For this, lot of brainstorming sessions will be required with the management, principal, IQAC coordinator, and all the people who are there, there at the helm of the affairs, those people can sit together and finalize the two best practices. We have to showcase two best practices in SSR. A very simple uh, solution, I can give it to your, all the IQAC coordinators. What you can do is you can ask your department heads to showcase the best practices of their departments. Once it will come to you, then you can have the brainstorming session and then you can decide about the two best practices. Not only department, the support services, the various cells in your college, various associations would have been there in your college. From that, you can choose any two best practices. The last 7.3, the last question, institutional distinctiveness. That is where your institution is different. How it is different, like Shashan College. Why Shashan is different from Guru Nanak College or MOP or from DG? You have to find out something that is very special only for your institution that you can explain it in detail. So this is basically a outline i can say this this i gave you a basic outline of ssr what all is there in the ssr so basically seven criteria marks has been fixed yes the criteria two criteria five have more marks comparative to six and seven and four and one of course now i would like to talk with you about how practically we can go look the questions are huge Answers are more difficult to find. First, we have to find the answers. So how we can go about that? So I have a few suggestions for all of you. Next, please. First of all, before jumping into the SSR, the IQAC coordinator, the principal, and maybe the management and three, four people have to sit and plan. That is one year before. If you are planning to summit, your SSR in the month of September 23, then it's a high time that you start preparing now itself. What you will do in one year, what will you do in nine months, what will you do in six months, all those things systematically, 
I will uh, share with you my thoughts. So I have divided the timeline into six phases. One year, nine months, six months, three months, then IIQA submission. After the IIQA submission, within one and a half months, you have to submit your SSR. But a very practical suggestion, when you are submitting your IIQA, your SSR final draft should be ready. Because if you make last minute changes, it will not go well with IIQA. You will be submitting some kind of details in IIQA. The same should be there in the SSR. So it's better to prepare SSR when you are submitting the IIQA, your SSR final document should be ready. Next, please. Before one year, before going to the department, asking them for data, asking them for things, it is better to prepare a team, a team who can deliver, a team who is committed, a team who has the time. You know, very practically, if we give the responsibility to a person who is not willing to take the responsibility, then it is very difficult to get success in that particular endeavor. So you have to prepare a task force, a high level three to four committed people who can read the, the workbook which I showed you, the manual. All these four or five people should read that manual like a Bible at least two to three times. They have to discuss each and everything in that book across the table. This may take one or two weeks. Once the task force is ready, you have to form the core committee that we call it IQAC core committee. So IQAC core committee can consist of, you know, uh, the eight or nine people or maybe seven people. Each criteria can be given to one person, criterion leader. If you have, you know, the person who is good with documentation and talking with your university, uh, can be there in the criteria one because criteria one is all about curriculum. Like in an autonomous college, this work or the leader of criteria one can be given to a dean academics because he or she will be the person who will be knowing the things about curriculum in and out or the controller of examination. Now the number two, teaching and learning and evaluation. This has maximum marks, 350 marks has been allotted to this. So you not only need a leader, good leader who can handle this, you will be needing a person who can handle a big team because according to the number of marks, we have to make the team for that particular leader. Formation of core committee. Core committee will consist of seven people or maybe eight people. After that, the formation of subcommittee. How subcommittee? Like criteria one, one committee, 1.1, we have to allot it to one more person. That subcommittee can do 1.1. One person in subcommittee. Subcommittee 1.2 can be allotted to somebody else. So like this, out of those 55 metrics, you need a team of 55 people who can work on their metrics, who can work along with those documents supporting documents, what all you will be needing for that particular area or that particular key indicator or particular metric. Now, once your team is ready, you have seven criteria, you have seven core committee members, you have 55 key indicators, metrics, you have 55 sub teams ready who will be working under core committee. Criteria leader one, there will be seven people working under him or her. Now you have come back to department because you will be collecting data from the department. So each and every department should have one department IQAC coordinator. This is the responsibility of that particular IQAC coordinator to collect the data, clean the data, give the supporting documents, everything to you. So next one year from each and every department, you have to choose a very committed person who can deliver and who can spend some extra time in doing this kind of work. Now the distribution of work and responsibility. This has to be centralized. Otherwise, sometime we feel that the duplication of work is there. It should not happen. But if you are building a team, the work has to be a lot 
allocated and it's better if it is democratized and then only uh, the joy of doing work will also be there the people will own like we do have a competition we used to say 3.71 has submitted on time it is about collaboration but 3.6 has not done this so uh, you know uh, internal competition a healthy competition will be there and uh, each and every metric leader will try to do his or her best and in a way in your college 55 people in few in a year time will be expert in neck preparation so that's the way because it is very difficult for one person to remember each and everything of that manual and prepare the ssr so if you divided it among the people they will be expert they will deliver it better it will be easy for all of you now the core learning core learning again there are certain data certain uh, you know documents which are repeated criteria 6 also some committees are there criteria 1 also we are talking about academic council criteria 6 we are talking about academic council so when these repetition will come then the pyramid the core committee the senior people who are managing the things will come into picture they have to coordinate between two criteria next please now after one year you have decided your team you have given assigned them the work that you have to do this you have to do this now you have to start the training those people will go back read the document they will search the website if a person has been allotted to work on 4.2 then 4.2 related what is the material available in the website he can go through he or she can go through it then they can plan the strategies for their own college what all is available in their college whether they can improve it or not so all those things will start so after the training deliberation and planning will be there the planning has to be there from the iqac coordinator side how the finalization of template is very important when we collect some information we should not collect half as earnestly we cannot just call or send a circular all the teachers are requested to send their lesson plan no we have to give them the templates that this is the template you would have given earlier you might be following something tell them that we want this information in this format please provide these 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 information in this this is this format because when again for the same data we go to the our teachers again and again they also feel frustrated and we also unnecessarily we collect needless data which is not at all useful to us so first of all the core team with iqac coordinator has to set criteria wise each criteria just to finalize the supporting document will take 3 to 4 hours so 7 days of continuous meetings with the core team members and maybe the people the higher ups so they can also contribute you know their knowledge and skills to you that you have to finalize the planning how will you collect the data in which format you will collect and who will collect and where will you keep it now you can start after 3 months of training and everything you can start collecting the data matrix wise you can collect the data and then after like the end of the 9 month maybe the i mean when the 6 month will come you have to see each and every metric and see where we are lacking what is less in our institution how we can improve it whether it can be improved or not whether we have to you know opt out that particular metric next please yeah now the 6 month temp distribution of template in phased manner okay so there are n number of more than i think 60 70 templates will be there if you send everything to your hod hod will curse you and nothing will come back to you so what you have to do is systematically slowly maybe initially for criteria 1 you can send three or four documents please fill these documents and send it back and give them some practical timeline you know deadlines should be practical don't say that please give this data by tomorrow no it is practically not possible they will write something and give you if you really want your data to be pakka 
and you really want your teachers to enjoy the process and do the work in a qualitative way with good quality, then you have to give them time. For that time, you can only give when you have planned it properly. So that's why I was I put three months only to prepare the team. Because if the team is good, the planning will be good. Once the planning is good, the getting the data, the collection of data will be very easy. So template distribution, don't overburden your teachers and head of the departments with too many templates at a time. They will get jittery. They may not be able to complete the task slowly one by one and give them proper time. When you are giving them the templates, don't just send it by mail and tell them, please fill and go back. I suggest have some small, small meetings. You can have the meeting in your, you know, in your hall, it's, I mean, seminar halls. Release five uh, data templates. Send somebody from core committee or IQC coordinator can go and teach them. These are the data. We want them to fill it like this. The IQAC coordinator, no need for HODs to attend that particular meeting. IQAC coordinator mm -hmm. then attend those meetings. A workshops can be conducted. Some people are not very comfortable with Excel or you know the computers. So those people can be given a little bit of training with your BSc computer science or BCA or soft, uh, uh, computing skill teachers. You can do that. So once when we are having a meeting, we are sharing the templates with them. They will share their you know, insecurities, their doubts and confusions. Each and everything can be, uh, we can tackle in that meeting itself. Now, once the data will start coming, look, it's a, it's a roundabout process. You are giving the templates, they are filling the templates and they are giving you back. So that what you are getting, you have to start you know, filtering it. You have to start evaluating it. And then again, you can give a few more templates to your HODs. The thing is, the collection of data should be one single point, one single email. Otherwise, people will say, I have sent it to her. I have sent it to this. This was not correct. Now I am sending you the new version. Sometime up to last minute, we find that we have uploaded the wrong file or we have not uploaded the correct version which we were working on. So data, the collection of data should be at single point. Again, you can segregate it. When the data will come to IQAC, IQAC will give it to the metric people for cleaning, for polishing, for making it beautiful and good. But the collection should be only one. Otherwise, the confusions will come. Now the distribution of data to the metric in charge. This can be done from the IQAC. So what I suggest, if IQAC is going for NAC, they have to keep their office very strong. Four or five computers with good internet facilities, the printers, the mails, or at least three to four people round the clock working in IQAC office. Then only the things will be systematic and can be collected. Next, please. Now, after three months, what will happen? All the data has come from the department. Verification will be done by metric in charge. Metric people like 3.7, 3.6, 3.5, 3.4. These people have collected the data, verify the data, prepared the document, supporting document, everything is ready. Now that can be reviewed by the leader of criteria three. Once it is reviewed by criteria leader and it has been finalized by criteria leader, it will come to core committee. Core committee, what I feel is after, I mean, after, once you start working on this, last six months, every 15 days, core committee has to meet and they have to see where their progress is. Criterion three has completed, uh, uh, has collected the metric, uh, the data and the documents from the metric in charge. They have reviewed, they have corrected it. Now they will show it to the core committee. Core committee again consists of various leaders, one, one to seven, all the leaders will be there, including IQC coordinator and principal. You can review, you can give your suggestion, you can improve it, enhance it through your, uh, uh, like uh, across the table, you can discuss the issues and you can give your suggestions. 
Now the suggestions and enhancement process will come because not necessarily criteria three will be knowing all about criteria three. A person from criteria five or six, when he or she see the document, they can say, no, no, we can add this particular document here. It will be useful for us. So that way, the dialogue between the criteria leaders is also very important. Again, now what will happen now, we have to tally the data. A data which we are showing that we are having 35 research guide in our college. Where we are showing, we are showing it in our extended profile. The same thing is there in criteria two also, where we are talking about the teacher's profile. But when it comes to criteria three, when we are talk about the research, we are telling that we don't have 35 guides, we have only 30 guides. So that data mismatching should not be there. Who will do this review and verification? Core committee has to sit together. These are long process. You have to book one boardroom or something like that. Permanently, you will be needing one LCD projector where you can share your data and show your things. Next, please. Last three months, you have to finalize the numbers and corresponding document. If you have 80 teachers in your college, you should have 80 appointment orders. The number has to be correct. Data should match with supporting documents. If any deviation or discrepancy is there between the data, it has to be removed. If you are telling that BSc physics, we have 59 students, but at one place you are telling that we have 61 students. No, you have to make it pakka. At this point, before three months, you will you have to prepare your first draft of SSR. And that SSR draft can be reviewed internally by core committee. You can make the draft soft copy and all it can be shared with all the criterion leaders. They can sit and they can analyze it and finalize it. Once it has been finalized by core committee, it should go to a third person. Third person, not necessarily outside the college, a person who has not seen the process, a person who is not involved with data collection or not involved with IQAC should see whether the draft is okay or not. Because once when we are inside something, we are not able to see the fault of our own. So it's better to be seen by some new person, new committee or third person. After their suggestion, again, the second draft of SSR will start. By this time, a lot of new ideas will crop in and I request all the IQAC coordinator, you have to keep your eyes, eyes and ear open in your IQAC coordinators meeting because they are the best people who give you nice suggestions. So when you are conducting an IQAC coordinator meeting, don't say you do this, you do this, you do this. Just ask them what we can do about this because there they are all, most of the IQAC coordinators are comparatively young. The people in the department who know a little bit of, I mean, who are more well-versed with technology and those people are having really good ideas. So it's better to listen to them. It's better if they give really good suggestion. If you feel that it can be incorporated in your process, please do that. Now the second draft of SSR will be ready. Once the second draft is ready, there are a lot of things which NAC asks us. Submit it in SSR, show it in your website. So by this time, your website should be ready. There should be a separate team for website. And there has to be a direct communication between the website team and IQAC team. It is very important. What all you want to showcase in your website. Once your SSR has been submitted, all the expert people there, they will visit your website. They will try to dig what all is there in your college. So SSR is the showcase. You have to showcase your uh, website in the best possible way. Then only your SSR will be authenticated. Okay, the SSR and website data are matching. There should not be any difference between these two. Next, please. Submission of IIQ, I think today morning you had a session, data verification you have to do. If supporting documents, sometimes we feel that there is only one supporting document is enough, that's okay. You can give, you can add more things also, you can decrease also. 
at this point, when you are submitting your IIQA, you have to freeze your numbers. QNMs and supporting documents, you have to freeze. It's better not to change anything after that. This point of time, you can finalize your QLMs. QLMs is nothing, subjective answers. They ask, NEC is asking you some questions. You have to write the answer in 500 words. And whatever you are writing, you have to provide the documental support that, okay, we are doing this. Please see these pictures. We conduct a lot of blood camps. These are the pictures and certificates given by government authorities for blood donation camps. So supporting documents should be there. Once the documents are finalized, keep them separately. They should be ready for upload in a separate, separate drive. Next, please. Now, SSR has to be submitted in your NEC portal only. This has to be submitted within 45 days within the acceptance of your IA2A. And then half of the net fee you have to submit 50,000 plus GST that is somewhere around 59,000. So the day when you are started submitting your SSR, what you have to do, you have to get ready all these monies and all the other things. Next please. Now I will talk to you in detail about all the seven criterions. What all are there in which criteria and how we can work on it. The first is curriculum planning and delivery. Whether we are planning, our planning is effective or not, and whether we are implementing it or not. College calendar, internal exams, we have to write about all these. And this is a QLM. Basically, we have to write in 500 words how we plan our lesson plans, how we plan our academic calendar, whether we follow it or not. Like in Madras University, 19 teaching days are there, working days are there. So how we plan our internal assessment exams, how we do, which format we do, all those things we can write in 500 words. And then we have to, supporting document can be your, the soft copy of your academic calendar, or you can just scan your academic calendars of last five years and you can upload it. Next please. 1.2 is about academic flexibility. This also, this consists of 30 marks. So what are the extra courses which your college is doing? Look, university has given you one prescribed format. These are the core courses. This is the language. This is the soft skill. Compulsory, you have to study this. But apart from that, what your college is offering? What kind of courses you're offering? And uh, how many students are going there? So again, this is a QNM. The question is only about value added course. Of these value added course supporting documents when you are giving, you have to give the list of the students, the certificate copy, or the list of the programs which you are organizing and the which you have, you, you might be having some documents and letters from the university. All those come as the supporting document. Now the percentage of students enrolled in certificate and add-on courses. This also is of 15 marks. So if the Shashan College is having 4,000 students on their roll, how many of them are taking these courses? What is the percentage in last five years? So these documents, now the list of the students will come. The classes, when you conduct the classes for these add-on courses, some pictures they may require, maybe the reading material they may ask, the kind of marks you give they may ask, so those will be the supporting documents. Next, please. Key indicator 1.3, that is curriculum enrichment. Metric 1.3.1. In your curriculum, what are the issues which are related to professional ethics, gender, human values, environment, and sustainability? You have to write a 500 work, words document for this. This, I don't think Madras University people will find it difficult because we have one EVS paper for undergraduates. We have value education paper for undergraduates. So those syllabus, are, uh, maybe our um, curriculum structure copy can be shown it as a, uh, you can show it as the uh, complementary document or supporting document. And you have to write this QLM in 500 words. Percentage of students undertaking project. Nowadays, UGC and all the good higher education institutes, 
expect that all the students of the college will go for some kind of internship every year. So what I suggest, if your institution is not following, you should have a compulsory project work, compulsory internship, and compulsory field visit for each and every program. That way, each year, the students will have something to showcase and definitely these kind of things will expand their knowledge and skill base. This 1.3.2, we don't need data for five years. The last completed academic year only, the MAC asks you. So how many students are there in the college and how many of them are doing project or field work or internship? Next please. Is, yeah, the feedback is very important. Look, the feedback has been collected at two places. Criteria one, they ask about our feedback system. Criteria two, they NAC people conduct a student satisfaction survey themselves. In a way, both of them are similar only. So what kind of feedback system your college is having? Whether feedback is given by students only or the students and teachers also give the feedback. It is very important. Sometimes you may feel why the student teacher's feedback is needed. No, teachers can give the feedback on curriculum, whether the curriculum is correct or not, whether we can improve the curriculum. Employers, the people who are giving job to your students are employers. And then what we have to do is we have to do the feedback analysis. The feedback which has been given is good or not. If it is not good, what are the places where we can improve? What are the suggestions? After the feedback analysis, I, this is the work of the IQAC. They have to do the action taken report. What kind of changes we have made? The student is telling that this particular subject, we are not able to finish it on time. So whether you are giving extra hours to that particular subject, that is called the action taken report. The action taken report has to be uploaded in your college website. And this consists of 20 marks. Next, please. Criteria two, teaching, learning, and evaluation. In that, student enrollment and profile. What is the enrollment percentage? The Madras University has given you that 70 students can study in BCom corporate secretaryship. Whether those 70 students are studying or still your seats are lying vacant. That is called the enrollment percentage. Next is reserved categories. You know, in our, so, uh, in our HE, all the HEIs, there is a norm that certain percentage should be given to certain community. So whether we are following that norm or not, we have to give the details of our students admitted along with the reserved categories. This has to be there for five years. And sometime university asks us to admit extra students. Those numbers we don't want here. Supernumerary seats numbers we don't want at all in our neck. Next please. Yes, student and teacher ratio, it has 40 marks. Nothing, you just have to write the number of teachers and number of students, but they ask for list also, and here they ask for appointment orders as the document proof for supporting documents. Next, please. How we are teaching? Look, the syllabus has been given by Madras University or your university since you are an affiliated college, but the methods can be evolved by each and every teacher. So whether your methods are student-centric or not, whether the experiential learning is there or not, whether the more practicals are there or not, hands-on training we give them or not, we take them to the field visit or you know store visit for marketing person store visits or whether the peer learning is there or not, students conduct the seminars and presentations on their own or not. What kind of quizzes or problem solving activities we are giving to our, uh, our students? And what kind of ICT tools we are using in our classrooms? All this will come under 
student centric method again it's a subjective it's a 500 word document you have to upload but along with the proof what can be the proof the pictures of your field visit the reports which you would have submitted in your field visit or participative learning what you can do is you can prepare a booklet each and every department can write on these things what are the ict tool they are using if lcd projector they are using regularly the logbook will be there the logbook can be shown that we use ict tools very frequently if you conduct you have the smart classroom you can show the few pictures of those smart classrooms next please yes this is the percentage of full time teachers against sanction post in a particular department how many teachers you need in the particular year how many were actually there all those things percentage numbers will come here both these questions are with numbers the second question is qualified teachers sometime when the shortage of qualified teachers your good teachers is there we appoint the people for the ad hoc on ad hoc basis and for the time being so no but net expect us to have our teacher either with net set or slat or with phd so teachers qualification play a important role in our accreditation next please internal and external assessment yes internal assessment affiliated colleges are doing what are the parameters it has to be clearly written and this is again a 500 word documents but it consists of 40 marks what you have to show it as the document here is your internal mark register will be there in each and every department each and every subject or each and every course whichever way you want to say it so those you know the scan of those registers or those document can be kept as supporting document and the system of internal assessment also whether it's a pen and paper or it's a seminar or it's a group discussion or it's a quiz or it's the submission of you know some small project on which you give the marks to the student all those things will come under this external assessment yes the university external exams are there so whether it is transparent or not there when they publish the result more than that the practical exams are there for science students so whether they are there in the proper format and the quality how you are maintaining the quality all those answers will come here in this qualitative matrix next please yes student performance and learning outcome look for each and every program that is each and every degree course and each and every paper the paper is courses so the course outcome and program outcome should be displayed everywhere in the college especially on the college website all the students should be aware of that what what course they are learning and what is the out, what will be the outcome of that particular course and attainment yes you have to map the pos with cos and that attainment has to be evaluated with exams maybe some and it has to be map with end semester exams also and mid semester exam also again you have to write a process in 500 words 2.6.2 is nothing but the pass percentage of the students in last 5 years and but it it it's, it it consists of 45 marks next please uh criteria 3 yeah sorry student satisfaction survey for this you just have to collect the name of your students with their phone number and email id because you have to submit this is an online survey which nec will conduct and usually as soon as you submit your ssr they will start conducting this survey they start sending the mail to the students their question is of 2025 questions so how your students are judging you on those parameters those marks only it consists of 60 marks so this is all the feedback of your students so before submitting your a uh, students list to the nec during your ssr submission of ssr please 
do train your students in how to submit one feedback because this online satisfaction survey they do it like there will be 19 questions which will be multiple choice but one questions they will ask in detail sometimes the student will say the teachers comes to the class on time they will say excellent yes they always come on time and the last that one liner they will write teachers are not regular the contradictory student satisfaction survey may do so you have to be careful with the students sometime without unknowingly students do some mistakes so a lot some 10 to 15 teachers who can train your student in how to fill this survey next please now we will come to research innovation and extension 3.1 is about the grant received for research in last five years it is again a number the money in lakhs it will come whether the government has given or some industry has given or some non-government organization has given us project it consists of 10 marks next please next please yeah thank you uh, this is about creation of ecosystem for innovation and transfer of knowledge how many patents have been filed by your institution how many papers research papers has been published whether you are having incubation center or innovation cell or not it's again a 500 words document you have to write but but here you have to show the patents which have been received by your institution or your faculty members how many of them have been published how many are there in the pipeline and how your incubation center is working now number of workshops and seminars and conferences conducted by the institution on research methodology on intellectual property rights or on entrepreneurship development so these it's a q and m they ask about the number but in a, the supporting document they ask us the report the invites the circulars the certificates sometimes they even ask during the dvv process they will pick okay this particular seminar conducted on 17th december 2018 please send the invite of this particular seminar or who was the chief guest who was the chief resource person send his his bio data so those kind of questions will arise during your dvv process you need to be very careful when you are writing the numbers of workshops and seminars and conferences next please number of research papers published per teacher look here it is ideally all the teachers in your institution should publish the paper if a person is publishing a paper five papers also it will be counted as one in 3.3.1 if a person is publishing the same paper with five more people of your college here they will be counted as five teacher but you come to 3.3.2 number of books and chapters and edited volumes published in papers published in national international conferences and proceedings here the number will matter 3.3.1 the number of teachers will matter so encourage all your teachers to publish research paper in ugc campus next please this is all about extension activities 40 marks has been devoted to this particular metric extension activities you are doing it in neighborhood or not so basically the idea behind this is the the student should be aware of the social issues near in nearby areas and for their all round development so what you have to see is in last five year what kind of activities you have done and how it has influenced the student to turn into a better human being again it's a 500 words qlm it's a document where we, you have to give the supporting documents also now because of your extension activities what kind of awards you have received from the government or government recognized bodies that is again you have to write in 500 words 
and you have to showcase all your awards and achievements or appreciation letters which you received from government or government recognized body it is not that ki i can as at the personal capacity i can write a letter ki yes shashan college is doing very good activities and nss i cannot sign and give it to you it will contain no value at all the value will come when the nss head of the madras university will give you some appreciation letter or some rotary rotary people or some exnora people or the ngos which are recognized by government of india or tamil nadu will give you some kind of recognition some government agency is important if they give you award or appreciation then only it is counted in mac now for 20 marks previous one please yeah the 20 marks number of extension and outreach program conducted nss and ncc in my college every day they are conducting program so those numbers we have to showcase here and number itself will be there you will upload it in your ssr again supporting documents you have to write the name of the activities number of people who attended the date and everything will be there for this is for last 5 year next please collaboration as uh, i was talking earlier ki we cannot work in a cocoon we need you know atmosphere around us we interact with industry industry tell us okay we want these kind of students we want the people who are good with this knowledge and this kind of skill and then what we do we prepare our syllabus according to the need of the industry we train our student and send them to the industry sometime when we interact more with industry we sign the mous with them sometime we send our students to them for internship sometime we invite them to come and give the knowledge to our students or give them you know hands on training so all these collaborations they can be of different nature faculty exchange can be there between two higher education institutes student exchange can be there students can go for internship and go for field trip so all the research related activities so basically here what we are showing is the number of mous and collaboration only the number will be required along with the uh, supporting documents next please now criteria for physical facilities physical facilities what are the physical structure is available physical infrastructure is available in the college the classrooms the laboratories whether the laboratories are well equipped or not what kind of instruments are there this is again a narrative 500 word uh, document qlm consist of 20 marks so there you have to write about all kind of physical facilities how many seminar halls you are having how many smart classrooms you are having whether your all classrooms are with ict facilities or not what kind of sports facilities you are providing everything will come under this 4.1.2 is about the percentage of expenditure on infrastructure so whether the money which we are uh, we are uh, expenditure should how much what percentage of expenditure is there in infrastructure that nak people are asking us to show so this will be your audited account statements next please library as i told you library is a big learning process uh, i mean resource and whether how many e resources library has been subscribed how much money we spend on the library and then again how many students or teacher visited the library all these details we have to write in 4.2.1 again it's a qlm document but we have to give the supporting documents like nowadays it's all automated so login details of the library we can say or the the purchase books and receipts will be there in the library financial documents will be there that this much money has been spent on the books or this much money has been spent on getting the e resources for our students and teachers next please it facilities whether the internet connection is there it's a basic need of any educational institute now so whether the bandwidth is good or not whether it is appropriate or not and uh, 
IT facilities, whether they are updating, they are latest or not, all these things will come under this. Now, one QNM is their student computer ratio. Yes, computer and are integral part of learning of any student. We cannot say since we are not an engineering college, we don't need that many computers. No, student computer ratio to be maintained and latest academic year number of students and latest academic year, what, how many computers are there in the institution? You have to submit and they may ask you the bills for these com computers also. Next please. Percentage of expenditure incurred on maintenance of infrastructure. So there are a number of physical and academic facilities are there in the college. So how we are maintaining them, how much money we are um, spending them. So basically we have to find the percentage that what, what percentage of money we spend on our infrastructure management. Next please. Yeah, the criteria five, again, as I told you, it consists of 140 marks. Student support consists of 50 marks. That is nothing. What kind of scholarship our students are getting from the government and non-government agencies? This is 5.1.1. This is just the number, the number of students. If I'm Guru Nanak College is having 4,000 students, whether 2,700 students or 2,000 students are getting the scholarship. From where they are getting, what is the amount, who is the source, all those things you have to provide as supporting document. Now the second 5.1.2 is capacity building and skill enhancement initiatives. NAC is asking you to concentrate on four areas, soft skills, language communication skills, and life skills and then computing skills. So all these four areas, what kind of training we are giving it to our students, whether we are conducting any extra classes for language or communication, we tease them English communication or office communication, what kind of soft skill papers we are providing to our students, physical uh, fitness, what is the infrastructure in the college, facilities are there or not, whether we conduct regular programs no kind of guest lectures or maybe workshops for them. All those things will come under this. Now, the percentage of students benefited by guidance for competitive exams and career counseling. How many career counseling programs we organize? And for competitive exams, each and every college formally and informally they train their students. So those activities you can showcase here. Now the student grievances about ragging and sexual harassment, where they can give their grievances, whether online mechanism is there or not. And if they write any complaint, how many days it takes to you know, resolve the issues. All those things are there in 5.1.4. Next please. Yes. Student progression. After completing a particular degree of an institution, whether the student is going for work or whether he's going for higher studies. So percentage of placement and progressing to higher education of outgoing students. Every year, how many students are going for work? How many students are going for higher studies? This we showcase in 5.2.4. For this, this is very important that we should be in touch with our alumni when they go out also, they join some college also, let them send you some kind of documental proof that they are studying there or if they are working somewhere also, they can always share their ID card with you. That will be a good, you know, kind of support document for this particular metric. Percentage of students who are qualifying the Exams like JAM, CLAT, GATE, and all those things. So this also you have to collect and give their names with their, when they clear the exams, they will definitely be coming back to you. They may be coming to the teachers. So this is slightly difficult to collect the data, but the department 
uh, coordinators and the mentors of that particular students can help us in collecting this data. Next, please. Student participation and activities. How many, look, college is not all about, you know, the academic uh, achievements. It's about the versatility or the total uh, holistic development of the institute. So how many activities he is participating, whether he is good in culturals or whether he is in sports or not, and what kind of awards he is winning. So these numbers and medals will come in 5.3.1, and it's a huge 25 marks has been allotted to this because the uh, achievement of one students only quantify that the institution is very good quality wise. Now, the average number of sports and cultural programs in which students of the institution has participated. There are two things. First is 5.3.1 is all about the medals or the positions which they have got. How many of they have won in last five years? The next is about how many they participated. These numbers are also important because it shows that the institution helps the student to come out, you know, from their, uh, come out and perform well in the areas other than the academics. So if the more number of students are participating in these kind of activities, means colleges believe in holistic development. Next, please. Presence of registered alumni association. As I told you, alumni are important aspect of any HEI. They are the brand amb ambassadors of any HEI. So how these alumni are contributing to your college? You have to write in 500 words. And uh, you know, the contribution cannot always be financial. It can be in the form of, we can write it in the form of, you know, they will come and uh, uh, they can give lectures also. If they are doing really good, they can give internship to your students. They may give job to your students. So how the alumni, alumni always contribute. I think it is uh, in, uh, in the form of, you know, how to improve your things. You can organize some alumni meets. They can come, they can talk. Those kind of things can be recorded. And as a supporting document, you can show it in 5.4.1. Next, please. Yes, criteria six is all about governance, leadership, and management. So again, here, one QLM is there of 10 marks, where you have to write whether the governance is decentralized or not, whether the, it's participatory or not, whether the leadership follow the vision and mission of the institution or not. No. So it's a 500 words document that can be prepared by any of your senior faculty members. Next, please. Six point two point one. Again, this is a QLM where we have to write in detail how the institution, our institution is working whether they are effective and efficient or not, what, what are the policies they follow, what is the administrative setup, what are the rules and regulation for appointing somebody and hiring, firing, HR policy. So all these policy, whether they are well-placed policies are there or not, where they follow all the procedure, all the guidelines which has been given by UGC or NEC or not. So in 500 words, you have to say about the functioning of your college and you have to give appropriate supporting documents like your policies and all you have to show. Now the implementation of e-governance. What NEC is expect us to follow the e-governance in mainly these four areas. One is examination, one is student admission and support, one is finance and the fourth is administration. So. Nowadays, yes, it's a time of technology, information and technology. Most of our admissions, we do it through online admission. So that can be shown finance and accounts also we maintain through our e-governance. So how we are 
following this e-governance system is in our institution. If we follow in this four areas, we can just tick yes and we can give them some supporting documents. Next, please. Teachers, faculty are the main important, the pillars of any higher education institute. So how an institution polish their faculty members, how they enhance their knowledge and skill, how they encourage the faculty members to you know, earn more knowledge and skin, uh, skills and then distribute it to the students. So whether the management, look, criteria six is all about governance, management and leadership. So whether the management is taking the welfare measures for the teachers or not. Again, it's a 500 word QLM documents, but here you have to write whether all the facilities which have been prescribed by the government and UGCs and state and central government, whether the management is following them or not, whether there is an appraisal system or not. Government colleges, yes, regular appraisal systems are there, but in self-financing colleges also, that at the regular inter interval, the pay increments are there or not. If it is there, what kind of system is there? It's a self-evaluatory or every year they go for appraisal. So all these details can be come here. Now the percentage of teachers provided with financial support to attend the conferences and workshop, 6.3.2. This has 12 marks and it's just the number. So a college is having 170 faculty members. Out of those 170 members, how many teachers have been provided the financial support? For what? To be a member of professional body or you attend a conference or attend a workshop. This monetary benefit can be small as, you know, the processing fee. It can be like uh, travel allowances and maybe daily allowances. Some, uh, it depends on the institution to institution. But here, the main objective of the NEC is how many teachers are getting that. Only one teacher is getting five lakh or the 10 teachers are getting five, 5,000 each. So how democratic the process is. Uh, this neck want to find out. That's why this particular QNM is there with 12 marks. Now the next is percentage of teaching and non-teaching staff participating in FDP, PDPs or administrative training program. This is compulsory for all the teachers to go through one or other orientation program or refresher program or faculty development program. So NEC expect all of us to attend this program every year, three to five days, and we have to upload our certificates. This can be collected from the departments again. Next, please. Strategies for mobile mobilization and optimal utilization of resource and funds from various resources. This is how the college is managing its finances, how much it is getting from the government, how much it is getting from the corporates or NGOs or you know other government bodies when they give money for research and other things. Apart from that, whether the higher education institute, they are conducting regular financial audits or not. One is internal audit, one is external. These are mandatory. So all these documents of the aud and audited statements are also requested in this particular criteria. Next, please. This is regarding the IQAC. So contribution. Yes. Now the contribution of IQAC in teaching learning process structure and methodologies of operation and learning outcome at periodic intervals. This is nothing. NEC is asking IQAC to go for regular internal audits to the department and see whether they are following the procedure or not, or their quality of teaching is on par with global standards or not. 6.5.2 is all about quality assurance initiatives of the institution. As I told you earlier, 
whether IQSC conduct the meeting regularly or not, whether they collect the feedback or not, whether they analyze it or not, what kind of collaborative activities IQSC is doing with other institutions and industries, whether the institution is participating in NIRF or not, and timely AQR submissions are there or not. On these parameter, this QNM has, they measure the success or they give the marks. Next, please. Criteria seven about the institutional values and best practices. So institutional values and social responsibilities, which we instill in our students through gender equity. Yes, whether the women development cell is active in that particular institution or not, what kind of gender sensitizations program we do. And apart from that celebration of national and international commemoration days, 26th August, 15th August, with what kind of passion, what kind of enthusiasm we are doing this program. This we have to write it in 500 words and support, we have to give the photographs and the programs invite also. So now 7.1.2 is about sustainable development. Whether we are having the facilities for alternative source of energy, how we conserve the energy, what is our waste management, how we conserve the water, what are the green initiatives we are taking it in our campus, whether we are disabled friendly or not, all these things will come under 7.1.2. Again, there are some questions they are asking. We have to tick yes or no. If we say all yes, we will get 20 marks out of 20. But only yes is not enough. You have to provide the supporting document for that particular answer. If you are using the alternate source of energy, you have to show it in the picture also. Yes, we are using solar energy. Only picture is not enough. It has to be geotagged. Sometimes geotagged picture is not enough. They may ask you, please provide the bill for this particular facility. You have installed a solar facility in your college. Which year, which month you installed? You will be having the in your financial books, definitely that amount expenditure will be there. Please show us the bill. So whatever you are showing in your SSR, please be very careful for each and every number, each and every word, you should have some or other kind of supporting document. Otherwise in the DVV, you may find it very difficult. 7.1.3 is about quality audits on environment and energy. Whether we are doing these audits regularly or not. There are agencies, in fact, certain departments, there are like electrical departments or some outside agencies, some government agencies also do these kind of audits. Okay, whether we are energy efficient or not, or whether we are following the green practices or not. So these year-wise audits reports should be available. Now the next is institutional efforts initiating and providing inclusive environment and constitutional obligation. Values, rights, duties, and responsibilities of the citizen. So what kind of value education we are giving to the students? What kind of programs we are organizing? Sometimes we conduct competitions, sometimes we conduct, you know, quizzes on Indian constitution or Indian freedom fighter. Recently, we celebrated Azadi Ka Amrat Mahotsav. All those programs, efforts, and initiatives will come under 7.1.4. Next, please. Best practices, as I told you, whatever activities you are doing in your college, each and every department will be doing, might be doing n number of things in their department, which you can showcase as your best practices. This you have to sit with your higher ups of your institution, finalize the two best practices, and NAC has given some parameters. Okay, what is the objective of this best practice? What is the context? How we implement the practice? Why this practice is successful? What kind of problems you faced? 
while implementing this particular practice? And what are the resources you deployed for you know, doing this process or practice? So these seven parameters has been already given by me. So on these seven parameters, you have to work and write 1000 words. I can say a kind of case study for your best practices. So we need two best practices of 1000 words each. And this may take some time because initially, while you were preparing your SSR, five, six months, you may not be able to find the practices because one, the deliberation and discussions will be there more. Once you collect the best practices of the department, you will be able to find your institution practice more easily. Last, next please. Institutions distinctiveness. Where do you feel that your institution is different from other institution? Only one area you have to showcase where you are the tallest. Not necessarily in the field of academics, not necessarily in the field of research. It can be any field. It can be social service. It can be student progression. It can be your mentoring, the way you mentor the students. It can be your sports facilities, whatever it is. But in which area nobody else is there as good as you people that you have to showcase in this. And again, this is again 1000 word document consists of 20 marks. So criteria seven, you have to be very careful, submit the documents very diligently because when the peer team will visit, they will look more into criteria seven only. So whatever you are submitting, you have to be very careful about the corresponding documents. Next, please. Yeah, that's it. I just want to thank the organizers and the management of Shashun Jain College, the IQAC coordinator, the principal, and all of you for listening to me so patiently. Thank you very much. And the people who are going for SSR submission, my best wishes and prayers are with them. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Ma Sorry for the interruption. One minute. So. Sorry for the interruption, ma'am. No issues. No issues. We have some technical error. Just a minute, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for your clear, gentle, and valuable inputs on SSR preparation in a very systematic manner and for your warm words of uh, wishes to us. If participants have any question, you can post it in the chat box so that can be discussed in the forum. Ma'am, the first question is, in 6.3.3, can we include FDP and administration I'm sorry, I'm not able to hear the question actually. Can you repeat the question, please? In 6.3.3, can we include FDP and administrative training program conducted yes. by our organization also? Definitely, definitely you can, you can, definitely ma'am. It can be whether it has been organized by your organization or they have gone outside the college and attend. Both can be included here, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And the second question is um, whether add-on course or certificate course offered for two years, can it be considered as two courses, ma'am? Or one course? Yes, ma'am. Add-on course or certificate course offered for two years 
can it be considered as two course ma'am uh, can you unmute yourself ma'am oh sorry ha huh. no problem no. no it is only one it can be considered as one because for each and every add on course there will be a subject code so one subject code one course name it will consider as one only okay ma'am and the third question is is it necessary to have attendance register signed by each student or is it sufficient to have attendance marked by the course instructor ma'am no no it is not as for the students no not necessarily no not yes. at all no yes. it is not necessary at all yes thank you ma'am participants any other questions Uh, yes, ma'am. How are we supposed to prepare record of mentor and mentee interaction? Yeah, the mentor and mentee. You know, the 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 ideal situation is the starting of the academic year when the new students come to the college. The twenty four or twenty five students should be allotted to one teacher, and that particular teacher should maintain a register for mentor and mentee, and all the details should be there. You know, you you can devise your own forms like this. sometimes what we do we keep a record book kind of thing two page document for a students they given to the mentor the progress of the student and the meeting of the parents so in that particular mentor mentee register so yes the mentor mentee and ideally it is better if a student stay with same teacher for during his course of study if it is pg 2 years it's ug 3 years so the same teacher from the day of Uh, admission to the getting degree the same teacher if it is there the mentor it will be easy for the teacher also because once the teacher will be the student will be the alumni she can be in touch with that particular student so mentor mentee is very important each and every department should have teacher wise mentor mentee uh, you know uh, details actually it is very important thank you ma'am dr l mahalakshmi ma'am can you please post your uh, question in the chat box So you have raised your hand. Oh, we did not get a reply from you. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much for such I, patient hearing. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I invite Madam Doctor K. Vijay Lakshmi to deliver the oath of thanks. Okay. Uh, Doctor Vijay Lakshmi, I think uh, you have to unmute yourself. Huh? Your mic is. Ma'am, is it audible? Thank you, ma'am, uh, for your uh, elaborated and each. Uh, you have elaborated uh, each and every metric from the SSR manual and the step-by-step -step process of collecting the data and preparing the SSR. 
in a very simple and understandable manner. Thank you, ma'am. My heartfelt thanks to the enthusiastic participants who have, ta who have taken part in the session and making the event a grand success. Thank you. Dear participants, we request you to fill in the attendance link which is posted in the chat box. It is mandatory for you to receive your certificate. The link will be active only for five minutes. Um, no, no sir. sir attendance link and feedback form is not same feedback form will be posted tomorrow during valediction mm -hmm.